I've had to film this video three times because it was so blurry, so, so if this one is not crisp, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to deal with the blur because I'm over it. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2024. I read a total of 33 books this month. How did I do that? I don't even know. I don't know. Apparently we were on a reading rampage. I'm probably going to split it up into two or three videos because 33 books is a lot, especially for me who never stops yapping. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I have is We Were Beautiful by Heather Hepler and I gave this a three out of five stars. This follows Mia Hopkins who doesn't remember much about the car crash she was in that left her terribly scarred and took the life of her sister one year ago. Her mother has left and her father can't even look at her so she is sent to live with the grandmother she has never met in New York City for a few weeks to give everybody some much needed space. This story is extremely slow paced. It's very much a look at Mia's healing process. It is very character driven but because of the slow pace I just found that it dragged a lot. The main reason I continued this book was because we kept getting hints that Mia felt very guilty about how her sister passed away and I wanted to know why that was. I did like the characters for the most part, especially Fig, who is Mia's new friend, as well as her grandmother, Victoria. I really liked how we saw Mia go from being completely guarded and closed off to opening up to new people and allowing them to help her. I did think that the romance was cute enough, but it didn't have me like giggling and kicking my feet the way I wanted it to. I just feel like this book was very surface level for me, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Miss Metal and Ash by Gwendolyn Clare and this is another one I gave three out of five stars. This is the sequel to Ink, Iron, and Glass, which I read years ago and honestly did not really remember anything that happened in that book. So when I picked this up years later, it is my fault that I didn't really know what was going on. I just wish that there had been a little bit of a recap to kind of give that refresher, but again, like 100% my fault for waiting so long to pick up the books from each other. I think that the magical abilities that people held in this world were the most interesting part of the story. I think that the scriptologists were the coolest. They were able to create brand new worlds by writing words into the special book. I think that Casa being its own unique entity of the story was also really intriguing. I also think that the ending was a little bit slow. It did end up picking up pace as the story progressed, but I do think that the ending was very rushed and I was left with a lot of unanswered questions, so three out of five stars. Next up I have Huge by Brent Butt. This is another one that I gave three out of five stars. Stars. This follows three stand-up comedians who are on a tour across Canada. The veteran Dale and the MC Rin quickly realize that their tour mate Hobie Huge is certifiably insane and it's kind of the story of that. This book is wildly entertaining but I won't say that it is necessarily a good book if that makes sense. I think that it started off extremely slow but it definitely did pick up pace once the first stop on the tour is over. I think that the comedy aspects of this book were really well done. You could definitely tell that the author knows what he was talking about from that aspect of the book. I didn't really care all that much about Dale or Rin but I was definitely invested in the next scary thing that Hobie was going to do. He was definitely the main reason I was invested in the story and kept reading but it was a very quick read. I finished it in a couple of hours. It was okay. Three out of five stars. The next book I read is Killer Instinct by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is part of the Natural series and I gave this a five out of five stars. I loved this book so much. This series is so unrealistic but it is so dang entertaining. You can't help but fall in love with it. This takes place a few weeks after the first book ends and it shows the group start to investigate a active case instead of the usual cold cases that they are assigned to. This case involves a copycat killer for none other than Dean's incarcerated father. I thought the mystery was a lot of fun. I loved how we got to see how much of a puppet master serial killer Dean's father was. I was so invested in this. This is a very character driven series and it has a cast of characters that you can't help but 
but root for. The character dynamics in this are so complex, especially because they are able to read each other so well. There's a lot of character development in this. I really liked how much we learned about Casey and Dean, but I do wish that there was a little bit more about the other characters as well. I'm assuming we're gonna get more from them for the other two books in the quartet. As of right now, the first two books were both five out of five stars for me. I really love this series and I'm very excited to pick up the rest. The next book I have is The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Keely Collins, who is a senior in high school, and she is also an 18-year-old virgin. The only other virgin in her class has just lost her virginity on the night of Keely's 18th birthday party, so she decides to take matters into her own hands, and she asks her best friend Andrew to help her lose her virginity because she has captured the attention of an older college guy named Dean. This was a very quick read. I ended up reading it in one sitting. I will say that I absolutely despised every single male character in this book except for Andrew, except he did get on my nerves with one little thing that he did that very much affected Keeley's entire dating life, so that rubbed me the wrong way, but I was definitely team Andrew 100% of the time. Dean was just creepy and gave me the ick and I was not a fan of him at all, which I am not sure if it is the point of the book or not, but he was a no from me. I did really like Andrew and Keeley's relationship. I thought that their friendship was very sweet. It made me a little bit sad that Keeley was so desperate to lose her virginity because it very much felt like she was being pressured to lose it and she didn't actually want to. There was also a lot of girl-on-girl -girl hate in this and a lot of slut-shaming, which I found a little bit weird because this book was advertised as being very sex-positive. So that seems strange to me, but overall it was fun. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next three books are all part of the same series. They are the fourth, fifth, and sixth books in the Bloodline series. It is a spin-off of the Vampire Academy, but they are The Fiery Heart, The Silver Shadows, and then The Ruby Circle. So we're going to start with book four, which is The Fiery Heart. I gave this one a three out of five stars. I struggled a lot with the first three books in this series, and this one actually did get better for me. There was just so much weight and body image stuff in the first three books that I was just not a fan of, so I'm really glad that that was finally like left in the past for this book. I do think that this series is a lot of fun, and it is very addictive. I really liked how we got Adrian's point of view in this book and the fifth and sixth books. I think that it very much helped enhance the story because we were finally able to see what Adrian's thoughts were. I am very much somebody who needs witty banter in a relationship, so I really liked the dynamic that Sydney and Adrian had with each other, and I will say they are pretty cute together. I honestly really like this entire cast of characters. I think that their dynamics are a lot of fun, but very complex at the same time. This book also leaves you off on a huge cliffhanger, so I was very excited to pick up the sixth book in the series right away, which is The Silver Shadows, which I ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is definitely my favorite of the series as a whole. This one takes place a few months after the fourth book finishes, and again, we're getting Adrian's point of view, which I do think really helped boost the story for me, especially because Sydney and Adrian are apart for the majority of this book, so it really helped to see how much they were both struggling being away from each other. We also see more of Sheridan in this book, who I absolutely despise. She is like the head of the re-education that Sydney is in, and the things that she does to Sydney just make me squirm and it just it made me very sad but the ending of this book had me kicking and squealing and so excited way more than I would um, care to admit. But that leads me into the sixth and final book of this series which I really enjoyed as well. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think that this was a great conclusion to the series. I will say that I think Rochelle Mead puts crack in these books because I find them so addictive. I won't say that they're necessarily good but they are entertaining. There are so many twists and turns in this and the one that like really goop and gagged me was to do with Adrian and Dimitri. I did not see it coming, but I was really into it. I do think that we are definitely left with a lot of unanswered questions, which was a little bit disappointing, so I'm kind of like hoping, praying, wishing that Rochelle Mead will write a spin-off series of the spin-off series and we can follow some characters that were introduced in this book in that series. Will it happen? Probably not because this was published like years ago, but a girl can dream, okay? Overall, I'll probably give the series a 3.5 out of 5 just because I struggled so much with the first three books, but the last three books, hell of a good time, so 
3.5 overall, definitely pick it up if you haven't, but I mean, it's been out forever, so you probably have. The next three books that I'm going to talk about are the last that I'll talk about in this part of the wrap-up, just because I've been yapping on for too long, but it is the first three books of the Rumor Central series by Roshonda Tate Billingsley. I gave all three of these books a one star. Um, I was not a fan. So this follows Maya Morgans, who is on a TV show called Miami Divas with a number of her friends. When all of her friends are fired from the show, she is offered to host a new gossip series, which she accepts. This causes her friends to become upset and turn against her. Her show ends up being a big hit, but she had to tear down a lot of her old friends in order to get there. And as she gains popularity, she also gains a stalker, and the first book kind of follows that. So this series features probably the worst main character I have ever read about. She is probably the most irritating, self-centered, full of herself, terrible human being I have ever had to read about. I thought by the end of the book she would have had a big character arc where she would have become a lot more tolerable and realized that she kind of sucked, but that never happened. And then when I went on to the second and third book, it still didn't happen, and it just kind of shocked me. The only plus to this series as a whole was that they were so quick to read. I finished all three books in one day. This first book was just extremely predictable. It was so obvious who the stalker was from the first time that they were introduced. So that was just a little bit disappointing. But then I was like, okay, let's go on to the second book because I have it, so why not? So this second one is called You Don't Know Me Like That, and it is again following Maya Morgan. Her show has blown up. She is very popular now, so she decides that she is going to hire a super fan to run her social media channels. But she does not realize how big of a mistake that was until it's too late, and it follows that storyline. So like I said, um, Maya Morgan still sucks. She has no character development in the second installment. You would think, again, that she would have a, just a little bit, a little bit of character development, but no, uh, still, still a shit human being. The amount of girl-on-girl -girl hate in this series so far has just been insane. It's wild. The only character that I liked in this book was was Alvin, who ends up helping Maya with this whole cyber security thing that's going on, um, but he deserves so much better than her, so I just want him to stay very far away from her. But then, um, silly me, decided that I was going to pick up the third book in the series because I have a copy of the third and fourth book, which I have not read the fourth book yet, but I'm going to. We're gonna do it just to get it off my shelf. But this one is called Real As It Gets, and again, I give it a one star. Um, this one again follows Maya Morgan, and she is back at it again, but this time she is using her gossip show to dismantle a drug ring that has sprung up and put a lot of people that she knows and cares about in danger, because it is a very dangerous new drug that has been taking its toll on people. This one was so predictable, it was so obvious who was behind the drug ring right from the very beginning, which was really annoying because Maya was just like so oblivious and it's like if you're supposed to be this like super sleuth gossip lady you would think that you would hear the gossip and know who was behind it but I digress. It at least tried to give a message that, you know, drugs can be a dangerous thing. I'm still not a fan of Maya. I truly do not understand how somebody can be so despicable and such a bad human being uh, with no remorse for anything that they do. She just really did not care about anybody that she hurt in the process of everything that she was doing. So, like I said, I do have a copy of the fourth book, so I will be picking it up. But will I enjoy it? Probably not. So, so far, the series as a whole, one star. Not a fan. All right, everybody, so those were the first 11 books that I read for the month of May. A total of 33 books were completed, so I will be filming another wrap-up, maybe two more wrap-ups. We'll see how much I yap in the next video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!